a battle of the brightest planets as Venus and Jupiter are in conjunction. We say goodbye to Orion and the winter constellations, and that means a return of the Milky Way core. Muslims all around the world will be keeping an eye out for the Ramadan moon, and it's also the month with the equinox, which makes it a great time of year to see the zodiacal light. Welcome back to another episode of What's in the Night Sky for March 2023 and apologies for missing last month's video. I needed a break and a much longer break than I was anticipating. As you can see, I'm coming at you from the new office. I'm in a completely new country, but I'll talk about that in my next video because today we're going to focus on what's in the night sky. And the month begins with a meeting of the two brightest planets in the night sky. There is a conjunction between Venus and Jupiter. Now I'm sure a lot of you would have noticed them over the past month in the west after sunset, getting closer and closer and closer to one another. And that comes to a climax on March the 1st, where they'll be less than a degree apart. So to put that into context, if you were to outstretch your arm and use your pinky finger, you'd be able to cover Jupiter and Venus just using your pinky finger. So they'll be in that tiny little bit of sky. And if you miss the main event on March the 1st, they'll still be less than a degree apart on March the 2nd as well. So you get a second opportunity. And then as the month goes by, Jupiter will sink down towards the sun and eventually disappear from view for a while. Whereas Venus is going to climb higher and higher into the evening sky. Towards the end of the month, on the 22nd, the 23rd and the 24th, Venus and Jupiter will be joined by a thin crescent moon. But more on that shortly. And after you've watched the planets set in in the western skies in the evening, keep looking in that direction and as darkness falls, you'll be faced with Orion and his winter friends like Taurus, Auriga, Gemini and Canis Major. But make the most of them whilst you still can because they will set shortly after sunset and this is the last decent month where you can get the full winter circle asterism of stars above the horizon in a decent position. You'll also notice the planet Mars in amongst the winter constellations and it spends most of the month in the constellation Taurus, but it moves slowly into Gemini by the end of the month and it forms a nice triangle of red-orange stars along with Betelgeuse from Orion and Aldebaran from Taurus. If you're in the southern hemisphere, you'll still see Orion and his winter friends in the west after sunset and you'll actually get a pretty good view of all of the winter constellations next month as well, so you don't need to panic as much as everybody here in the northern hemisphere. Now with Orion and co sinking below the horizon, it does mean that we will see a return of the Milky Way core. There's a really interesting story in Greek mythology about a great duel between Orion and Scorpius, which saw the demise of Orion. And there's many different versions of that story, but in one of them, the god Zeus uh, wanted to raise both of those warriors up into the heavens, um, but he placed them on opposite sides of the night sky so that they never meet again. And now Scorpius is continually chasing Orion out of the sky. So as Orion sets in the west, Scorpius rises in the east, and Scorpius is one of the constellations that straddles the Milky Way core. So during the latter half of the month, when the moon is not in the morning sky, you can head out, face east, southeast, and watch the return of the Milky Way core. For those in the northern hemisphere, it's a really good time to capture a Milky Way arch panorama facing east. So you've got the Milky Way core in the southeast and then the Great Rift arching over the east and down to the Cygnus region of the Milky Way in the northeast. For those in the southern hemisphere, it's also a really good time to do a Milky Way arch panorama, but facing a bit more south. So you'll have the Milky Way core in the east and then arching over the south with the Crux constellation and the Corrida Nebula very high in the south at the apex of the arch. This month also sees the beginning of the holy month Ramadan where Muslims all around the world will begin in a period of fasting for 30 days. And as the Islamic calendar is based on the moon, Ramadan starts at the first sighting of the waxing crescent moon after new moon. 
The first opportunity to spot this waxing crescent moon will be in the Far East and Eastern Europe on the 21st, but conditions will have to be perfect in order to spot the moon. Those in Africa or the Americas will have a bit of a better chance of spotting the crescent moon on the 21st, and if it's not spotted on the 21st, everybody on the 22nd will have a much better chance of seeing the crescent moon. Full moon this month is on the 7th and it's known as the worm moon in Native American culture, largely believed to be due to the sheer number of earthworms that appear in the soil as the spring warmth arrives. On March the 21st, we have the first equinox of the year where the sun passes directly over Earth's equator. In the Northern Hemisphere, this is the start of astronomical spring and in the Southern Hemisphere, it's the start of astronomical autumn or astronomical fall. All around the world, there'll be a roughly equal length of day and night. The actual day of equal day and equal night is called the equilux, and that falls within several days either side of the equinox, depending on your location on Earth. And the period around the equinox is actually the best time for those at mid-latitudes to see and photograph the zodiacal light. This faint, diffuse, triangular glow that seems to emanate from the horizon is caused by interplanetary dust reflecting sunlight back into the night sky. Recent research suggests that this dust is actually being blown off the planet Mars, and so all of that dust that's within the plane of the planets is reflecting sunlight, and you can see it glowing in the night sky. Now, because the dust is within the same plane as the planets, it's always seen straddling the ecliptic. Now, the ecliptic is an imaginary line in the night sky that the sun, the moon, the planets all roughly follow. Around the time of the equinoxes is when the angle between the horizon and the ecliptic is very steep, which means that the zodiacal light is able to climb higher into the sky, and so it's much easier to see for those of us in mid-latitude areas. Those close to the equator can see the zodiacal light very easily all year round. For those of you in the northern hemisphere, it's best seen in the west after sunset, and it lingers for a couple of hours as darkness falls. And for those in the southern hemisphere, at this time of year, it's actually best to face east in the pre-dawn hours, so before sunrise, the darkness before sunrise. But most people in the southern hemisphere live pretty close to the equator anyway, so you'll probably be able to see the zodiacal light in both the evening and the morning all year round. <laughs> and that's all I've got for you this month, guys. Now onto the hashtag Withens. For those of you that are new here, every month I set a target subject or theme for people to photograph, upload their images to Instagram or Twitter using the hashtag Wittens, and then I pick my favorite three for a prize. Third place wins a copy of my Astral Workflow Lightroom presets. Second place wins a What's in the Night Sky Constellation hoodie. And first place wins a copy of my book Photographing the Night Sky. Links to all of these products will be in the video description down below. So the theme back in January was Comet ZTF. And in third place was Kat Salis Astro in Greece with this image of um, some sort of outdoor structure. I have no idea what this is for. And the person's silhouette standing there as well with the comet in the sky. Well, this is a very nice, clean, well-processed image and enjoyed having that little bit of a human element in there as well. In second place was this awesome image from Leofine of the comet above the mountains in St. Antonian. <laughs> I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing that right. But also with a beautiful meteor streaking across the sky as well. Super lucky and a really nicely composed scene as well. And in first place was this very playful image from Corny Yowi Hand. It's a very interesting handle. Um, but this image here playing on the periodic element of the comet and that the last time it was seen there were Neanderthals here on Earth. So I really enjoyed this image. I got a good chuckle out of it and uh, just thought it was a really cool little idea. This month, let's go with the zodiacal light. It's one that I've done many times in the past and people tend to fail with this one and we don't get too many entries. So let's see if I can convince you guys this time to get out there and photograph the zodiacal light. 
So let me know which event you're looking most forward to this month in the comments down below. Hit subscribe if you haven't already and if you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck in clear skies.